Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be going over CS50 Lab 3 Sort. But before we jump into that, make sure you're subscribed to the channel with notifications on because I'm going to be posting videos every single week, so you don't want to miss that. Now let's jump straight into Sort. Okay, so in this problem set, they give us three different programs called Sort 1, Sort 2, and Sort 3. And they correspond to one of the sorting algorithms. It can either be Merge Sort, Bubble Sort, or Selection Sort, right? So our objective here is to find out which sorting algorithms belongs to which sort, okay? So, and they give us some data files to help with that as well, and we'll see how it's relevant a little later on. But first, let's go over each of the sorts. So these were explained very clearly in the lecture, so I'm not going to go over them too much. I'm just going to um, briefly explain them. So bubble sort, if you remember from the lecture, compares pairs of adjacent value one at a time and swaps them if they're in incorrect order. And then this continues until the list is sorted, right? So basically, bubble sort has an order or a big O of n squared, right? Which means in the worst case scenario, when there is an unsorted array, it takes n square steps for bubble sort to completely sort them, okay? And bubble sort has an omega of n, which means that when there's already a sorted array, or in the best case scenario, Bubble sort only takes n steps to sort them, okay? Now for selection sort, okay, so selection sort has an order of n squared, which means that in the worst case scenario, in an unsorted array, it's going to take n square steps for selection sort to sort the array. Now, selection sort also has an omega of n squared, which means that in whether, it's, whether the list is sorted or unsorted, Selection sort still takes n squared steps, right? In the best and worst case scenario, it still takes the same amount of steps, which is n squared. Now, when a sort has the a same order and omega, it has a theta of n squared, right? It's the same thing. In the best case and worst case scenario, it's going to take n squared steps to sort it. So, selection sort has a theta of n squared. And now, merge sort, if you remember, was uh, proposed in the lecture as the most efficient sort, right? So the most efficient sorting algorithm. So we can see here that merge sort has an order of n log n, which means in the worst case scenario, when there's an unsorted array, it's going to take n log n steps for merge sort to sort it. And it also has an omega, which means in the best case scenario, it's also going to take n log n steps for merge sort to sort it. So merge sort has a theta of n log n, right? Because it has the same big O notation, which is order, and has the same omega, which means in the best case and worst case scenario, it's still going to take roughly n log n steps for merge sort to sort the data. Okay, so what can we kind of conclude from this? Okay, so we can see that let's 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 just take the worst case scenarios first. So the worst case scenario, bubble sort takes n squared steps. Selection sort in the worst case scenario takes n squared steps as well. Okay. And now merge sort in the worst case scenario only takes n log n steps. Right, and n log n is less than n squared, so it takes less steps, right? So we can conclude that for an unsorted array, right, in the worst case scenario, merge sort will perform the quickest, right, because it's on the order of n log n, and bubble sort and selection sort will perform relatively similar, because they both have an order of n squared, right? So we know that bubble sort and selection sort are going to be slower than merge sort, when sorting an unsorted array, right? Because of their orders. What about the best case scenario? The best case scenario here is obviously a sorted array. So bubble sort has an omega of n, which means that it's only gonna take n steps to sort an already sorted array, okay? Where selection sort, again, has an omega of n squared, which means it's gonna take longer than bubble sort for sure. And merge sort takes n log n steps in the best case scenario as well. So um, over here, n squared is obviously the biggest, so it's selection sort is going to take the longest. And we can see that merge sort is n log n steps, so that's pretty slow as well. That's larger than n. So we can say that in the best case scenario with a sorted array, bubble sort should be the quickest because it has an omega of n. And in second place, it should be merge sort. And finally, the longest is selection sort. So what conclusions can we draw from this? Well, we can say that bubble sort is going to be the quickest, right, when it's when a, when it's in a sorted array. 
And selection sort is going to be the longest in an unsorted array, right? For an unsorted array. Because it has an omega of n squared, which is larger than both n log n and n. Okay? So the conclusions we can draw from this is that for a sorted array, bubble sort will perform the quickest because that is an omega of n. And selection sort will perform the slowest because that has an omega of n squared. Right? Okay, so how do we now take this, these conclusions and find out which sorting algorithm corresponds to which sort in the code that they give us? So let's go ahead and try that. So again, for an unsorted array, merge sort will perform the quickest. Okay, let's keep that in mind. For an unsorted array, merge sort will perform the quickest. Okay. Okay, so now let's try to run an unsorted array, right? Random, random 50,000, let's say. So how we do this is we want to time it, right? The one that takes the least amount of time is going to be merge sort, obviously. So let's just see the time taken here. Okay. So let's try to run this now. And the way we run it is time dot slash sort one. Let's say we want to test out sort one first. Random 50,000 dot text. And over here, basically, CS50 gave us three types of files. Uh, a file where things are randomly ordered, right? An unsorted array, reversed, where it's just uh, sorted backwards, and a fully sorted array. So we don't really need reversed for our scenarios here. So we're going to be focusing on random and sorted arrays only. Okay. So first of all, uh, let's just sort. Um, let's see what. Let's see how long sort one takes to sort this file of unsorted arrays. Okay. And this is how we do it time dot slash sort one run sort one on this file random 50,000 dot text and let's see what it gives us taking quite a while here okay so uh, let's see let's take a look at the real time okay because that's what matters to us so it took us sort one for an unsorted array of 50,000 took us 7.871 seconds Okay, sorry, seven point eight seven one six. Let's see how sort two does. So let's time dot slash sort two, and let's run the same file again. Random fifty thousand dot text. Let's see how long sort two takes us, and we can already see that it was a lot quicker. So that took us zero point six six three seconds. Okay, what about sort three? Let's do time dot slash sort three random 50,000 dot text and we can see this one is not very quick as well okay that took us 3.519 seconds okay so from this what's very clear is that there's one very clear winner right so two was obviously the quickest so based on that logic based on our conclusions earlier for an unsorted array, merge sort will perform the quickest. Okay, so from this, we can kind of deduce that sort two is going to be merge sort. Okay, because it performed the quickest for an unsorted array. It has an omega of n log n. Sorry, it has a, it's on the order of n log n, which means for an unsorted array, it only takes n log n steps, where selection and bubble sort take n squared steps. Okay, so now it's clear that sort two is merge sort. But we don't really know whether sort one, like is sort one merger or bubble or sort three merger or bubble. We don't know that yet, right? So let's take a look at a sorted list. Let's run the sorts for a sorted list now. And let's just run sorted 50,000 again. So let's take the time. So time dot slash sort one. Sorted 50,000 dot text. Oh, that was pretty quick. So sorted one, 0 0.440 seconds, right? I'm just copying the time from here. It's just so I remember the time it took. Uh, let's run the time again for sort two this time. And for the same file, sorted 50,000 dot text. Okay, let's run it. That was pretty quick as well. So it took 0 0.407 seconds. And next up, let's do time dot slash sort three. 
sorted fifty thousand the text. Okay, that took us three point one five six seconds. Okay, let's just these are a bit close, so let's try to run these again. Um, time dot slash sort one. Let's run dot two sorted fifty thousand dot text. Okay, so it took zero point five seven seven seconds. Zero point five seven seven seconds. Okay, so over here for the sorted list, we know that bubble sort is going to perform the quickest because it has an omega of n, which means in the best case scenario for a sorted array, it only takes n steps. So according to our conclusions here, bubble sort will perform the quickest. So from here, we can deduce that sort one should be bubble sort, right? Because it took the quickest for a sorted array. And we know from our previous experiment that merge sort of sort two. So sort three has to be selection sort, right? And this also kind of makes sense because we can see that uh, sort three, right? Which we, which we proposed is selection sort takes roughly the same amount of time for an unsorted and a sorted list, right? N squared has a theta of N squared. And we can also see that sort two takes roughly the same amount of time for an unsorted and a sorted list because it has a theta of N log N. So it's going to be faster than selection sort with both. And it's going to take roughly the same amount of time in both an unsorted and a sorted list, right? Okay. So we figured this out now that sort one is bubble sort and we've confirmed it again. Sort two is merge sort, right? And sort three is selection sort. So why did we need to do for both an unsorted and, so and a sorted list? Because we, could, we, we figured out only that merge sort of sort two, but we didn't know whether sort one was selection or bubble. That's why we had to run it again through a sorted list. And now we have the answers, right? So let's go ahead and go to answers.txt, which is, again, this is all in the distribution code. So sort one uses, we know the answer now is bubble sort. Sort two uses, uh, the answer is merge sort, right? From our two experiments we did. And sort three uses selection sort. Selection sort, okay. So how do you know that sort one uses bubble sort? Well, because it, uh, it ran the fastest on a sorted array, right? On a sorted list. Sort two uses merge sort. How do you know? Because it ran the fastest when using an unsorted list, right? Remember, it has a theta of n log n. So that's faster than both bubble sort and selection sort because they both have omegas of n squared, right? It ran the fastest on a random or unsorted list, right? And finally, Sort three selection sort. We said that because, why do we say that? Well, if sort uh, one is bubble sort and sort two is merge sort, sort three has to be selection sort, right? So basically it was the only option left. But also uh, we know that it took roughly the same amount of time for both uh, unsorted and sorted, which means it should be correct, right? It has a theta of N squared. And we can see that merge sort also took roughly the same amount of time because it has a theta of n log n, right? So for both unsorted and sorted, it took roughly the same amount of time. And bubble sort was the very clear winner in a sorted list. So that's why it was sort one. So this actually conforms with our theories, with our conclusions that we made over here, based on the big O notations, which is the order of, and the omegas of each of these sort sorting algorithms, right? So I hope that all made sense today, guys. If it didn't make sense, it's probably because you didn't understand the fundamentals of what uh, selection sort, bubble sort, and merge sorts are. So I urge you to go back and watch the lecture if you don't understand that. But this is one of the simplest problem sets we'll ever get in CS50, right? It was very straightforward. I hope everything was clear today. Make sure to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed, if it helped at all. And make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be posting videos every single week. That's all for today, guys. Bye, David!